Hello folks, my name is Mark. This is Why I Hate the World. How you guys doing? So as you're no doubt aware, we have just uh, had a massive tax cut go through the Senate and the House and is on its way to Trump's desk to be signed before the end of the year. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about um, what's actually in this tax cut or how it affects you, you know, because to be honest, you'll find much better analysis out there elsewhere in the, in the internet. You know, if you go to an actual news channel or something like that, and, um, there's much, you know, other people out there have explained it way better than I could, you know. Um, suffice to say that there's a lot of ridiculous pork attached to this bill, uh, things like, um, drilling in the Arctic Wildlife Reserve, you know, that has no fucking business being in a tax bill. Uh, another thing is that it, it repeals the Obamacare mandate, so you won't get the fine anymore if you don't buy health care, which is, you know, it sounds great if you can't afford it, but at the same time, it means that everybody's health care premiums are going to go up by 10% next year. So when that shit happens, remember, this is why. Um, you know, but I guess the big problem is that, well, first off, you know, if you make less than $55,000 a year, you're not going to see much of a benefit from this, you know, pretty much at all. You're not going to get shit. Um, and it just so happens that most people in the country <laughs> make about around $55,000 a year. That's, that's the median income, right? Most people in the country make that or less. I'm actually one of the lucky ones. I make, you know, more than that, right? I make, you know, I make enough that I'm actually going to see some benefit from this, at least until 2027, you know, when they repeal this, when, when they repeal the measures for the poor people. Which is funny because all the, all the tax cuts and breaks for the rich people don't expire, you know. So for the poor people, they expire in just in time for Trump to not be president and to, and to blame a Democrat. But for, you know, the rich people and shit, all their tax cuts go on forever. I don't know how that shit works. And uh, that kind of brings me to the meat of what I want to talk about here. So um, this is something I actually heard on Tom Hartman's radio program. Uh, tax cuts like these historically uh, tend to lead to a bubble. And then that leads to an economic you know, recession or a collapse, you know, because the idea that, you know, wealth trickles down on people, that's a myth. That shit just doesn't happen. Okay. It's, it, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you, you know, give to somebody, you know, a business owner or something like that. They're not going to hire people unless there's a need. Okay. That's just how it works. Unless you have a need to hire somebody, you're not going to hire someone. It doesn't matter if you have all this extra capital laying around. If there's no demand for your good or your service, you're not going to hire anyone. Nine times out of 10, after a tax cut, after a tax cut like this, what ends up happening is that um, the rich, the 1% people, they take it and they speculate, right? And they, they, a bubble will form somewhere in the economy, you know, in uh, 1929, you know, the, the roaring 20s, it was the stock market. So the president in, in 1921 or so cuts taxes, it, um, all the rich people take the money, they go speculate in the stock market, creates a big stock bubble, 1929, stock bubble bursts, right, that leads right into the Great Depression, right. Um, then there really wasn't any tax cuts for the next couple of decades because they kind of realized what happened until, you know, around 1980, everybody forgot. Ronald Reagan does like a massive tax cut, creates a bubble, 1987, stock market crashes, <laughs> All right? Leads to a recession, which is, that recession is probably the reason why uh, George Herbert Walker Bush only got one term, you know, if you think about it. I mean... You know, then uh, another uh, 12 years or so pass, 2001, George W. Bush becomes president, gives a massive tax cut, you know, a trillion dollars, right, tax cut to the rich people. That causes a bubble, right, this time in ho the housing market, real estate. Um, and about six, seven years later, right, 2008, fucking bubble pops, stock market crashes, leads into a recession. 
we're still dealing with the consequences of that recession. You know, it's it's been what like almost uh, almost ten years now since that happened, and we're we're still just barely pulling out of it. You know, it's only been a couple of years where things have been looking good, right? And why? Because Obama raised taxes. That's why. <laughs> but that's a that's a we'll talk about that you know another time. So there is a very big possibility now. You know, just looking at the historical trend that. Be after this massively gigantic, huge tax cut that benefits, you know, rich people <laughs> and only rich people, that there's going to be another bubble, you know, because, you know, people that make less than 55 grand a year aren't going to see much of a benefit. So they're not going to have the money, right, to go out and spend, which will increase the demand for goods and services, in which case then the, then the, you know, the capitalist class, the rich people, will go out and, and hire people because there's more demand. So that's how you work. If you really want to stimulate the economy through tax cuts, you need to cut it for the poor people. You need to cut it for the middle class, the poor people, the people that will actually take that money and have a need for that money. You know, they have needs that they need to fulfill, right? They need to buy a new car. They need to get their fucking plumbing fixed. They need to buy a new house. They need to buy a new mattress, whatever, you know. These are people that will spend the money immediately, stimulate demand in the economy, right? That's just how, that's how the shit works. And when you give it to the guy that has a million dollars, he's not going to spend it, you know? He's going to put it in the bank. He's going to buy stocks with it. He's going to invest it, right? And when you get too many people investing, <laughs> you create bubbles. That's exactly what happened in 2001. That's what happened in... You know, uh, 2001 to 2008, that's what happened in 1987, that's what happened in 1929. And there's a very good chance that it may happen again, you know, six to eight years from now. So what, you know, think about six to eight years. Okay, so let's say, right, that against all odds, Trump finishes his first term without having a heart attack or being impeached, right? <laughs> Which, you know, it could happen. And let's say that some, you know, he cuts a deal with Satan and he be gets elected again, <laughs> right, in 2000, uh, the next election, you know, whenever that is, fucking 2020 or whatever, right? Um, now, you got to remember, it looks like now that there's no fucking way that's going to happen, right? You never know. I mean, it might actually happen. Let's let's not underestimate Trump anymore. I mean, Ronald Reagan had had incredibly, you know shitty numbers during his first term. Everybody hated his ass, yet somehow he fucking, like, just God-stopped in 1984. You know, he got, like, every state during the 1984 election. He just turned that around. You know, his poll numbers were incredibly shitty, <laughs> right? Because people saw the, the trickle-down thing for what it is, and they fucking hated it. Yet, four years later, you know, Ronald Reagan is just, like, you know, cleaning up. And, you know, he, I mean, I remember that. I remember that fucking uh, election. I was like eight years old <laughs> when that happened. And I just remember on TV, the map was just all one color. And I was like, how the fuck did that happen? So it could happen again. Trump could get reelected, right? Well, about, you know, 2024, he'll be out of office. Okay, for sure. One way or the other, he's going to be out. And it's very, very likely that after Trump, we'll have another Democrat. Right, because that's just kind of how it works, you know, and it seems to go like that, you know, uh, one and the other. They'll, they seem to, to toggle off every eight years or so. You know, it's, it's not very common to have the same party elect another of their same party. You know, it's only happened a couple of times that, you know, and only once in recent memory, I think. You know, Herbert Walker came after Ronald Reagan. You know, hasn't happened again since, right? So it's very, very likely that we're going to have a Democrat in office when the shit hits the fan and the economy collapses and mark my words the republicans republicans are going to turn around and they're going to blame it on the democratic president whoever it is whether it's bernie or elizabeth warren or you know god forbid hillary clinton hopefully she doesn't fucking run again or just some other person that we don't know who's going to run whoever it is is going to get blamed for the crash that's going to result because of this tax cut <laughs> that's exactly what's going to happen Right? I'm saying it now. <clears throat> so, you know, so, so the, now what can you do about it? You know what? Nothing. There's nothing. You can't do anything about it. It's too late. You know, 
the only thing we could possibly do right between now and then is to vote in Democrats and raise taxes. That's really the only fucking thing. And pass regulation, you know, things like Glass-Steagall, that kind of that stuff, that kind of regulation to, to try to prevent, you know, speculative, uh, you know, um, investing by the banks in things like fucking credit default swaps and shit like that. That's the only thing that we can possibly do is is to try to try to pass laws to mitigate some of the damage, you know, and then maybe it won't be as bad. Maybe we might be able to stop it from happening, but good fucking luck with that, all right? It's, that's not gonna happen, not while, not, not while the Republicans are in charge, all right? They're not gonna pass shit, they're not gonna regulate shit. They seem to fucking, like, you know, sperm their pants every time Trump cuts a fucking regulation out there, you know, whatever it is, right? So, it's like, yeah, just, just get, you know, what can we really do? Try to protect yourself. At this point, that's really it. Just remember it's going to come. It's going to come probably in about six to eight years. So we're looking at uh, 2026, 2025, right around then. Shit's going to hit the fan. And you know what? Protect yourself. Save your money. Save your money by gold, by Bitcoin. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get to my hands on some Bitcoins. I know that... Right now, Bitcoin is like fucking 17 grand per Bitcoin. So the ship has sailed a little bit on that. But who knows? You know, if the economy collapses, it could go up to 500 grand. You know, who knows? So if I have like 0.25% of a Bitcoin, I might actually have some decent money. <laughs> okay. It's like, fuck it. You know, I mean, it's, there's not, you, know, you don't have a lot of options here. So just try your best to fucking like hedge your bets, you know, um, Save your money, prepare yourself, make sure your resume is good because there's a very good chance that during that time you might get laid off at whatever job you're at, you know, and uh, prepare for the worst, <laughs> all right? And remember, if it happens, you know, which is more like, more like when it happens now, just remember what caused it, okay? Remember it's not, you know... It's not fucking Marxism and socialism, socialist medicine and shit like that that's making the economy collapse. No, it isn't, okay? It's fucking Republicans and their predilection to cut taxes for the people who don't need it, which causes this kind of, this causes these, these boom and bust cycles to be magnified. <laughs> okay, to bit to to that's that's what causes these collapses. All right, just just remember remember when it happens, who actually fucking caused it. Okay, and remember who tried to stop it. Remember who rammed through a bill that was overwhelmingly unpopular, even among Republicans. All right, okay, it was Mitch McConnell. It was fucking Paul Ryan. <laughs> right, it was Rand Paul. It was all the Republicans who voted for it, and it was Donald Trump. Those are the people that caused this shit to happen. Adios, folks. Have a uh, Merry Christmas and a Merry New Year and whatever other bullshit holiday you celebrate. Here's to 2017 finally being over with. <laughs> Let's hope 2018 is much better. See you, folks.